I'm back and I'm now going to do so Sarah's room. I was about to say Sora. Ooh, let's be Tomoya Mikami. Tomoya sounds good. Tomoya? Yakka ne. Zettai muri. Ari enai na. Sansei shikanemasu. I can't concord. Hmm. Oh, that reminds me. How was Sugumi? Sarah slides slightly and held her hands out, hands out, palms facing up. I see. Feminine intuition aside, not even the two girls have been able to get through to her, even though there was no apparent reason for Tsukumi to blow grudge. What could Tsukumi have been so angry with us about? I decided to make her act... Uh... What's Caesar? Oh, the... <laughs> Those are the rules. Then Sarah Matsunaga becomes Caesar. <laughs> My stomach hurts. It really hurts. You're too funny. <coughs> but because that's that wasn't Caesar, but a mixed up Hamlet. <laughs> and then. Okay, this is an important decision. I'm kind of cheating and looking at the guide, but this is, you have to wait. Oh, whoops, whoops, whoops. Sorry, I think while I was going through use route, I accidentally pressed this. And so, yeah. Ah, I have to reread that. I'll wait here. I'll wait here. Okay, there you go. That's basically it. Think so? うん。なき先輩って気に入った相手には遠慮しない性格だから心を包み隠さないっていうか。Hmm. I wasn't sure why, but somewhere I was a little jealous of you and Takeshi. Even if I wanted to, I couldn't know I couldn't open up to anyone like that. I had nothing to share. A while after the two had disappeared, Sarah and I hadn't spoken another word. The two of us just leaned against the wall and stared into the darkness. I was desperately trying to think of some way to break through the wall that formed between us. Sarah, how old are you? Finally, the words tumble out of my mouth. I don't think so. Oh, cool. I'm an Aquarius, too. Sarah rattled it off so smoothly she might have been singing the song she knew. I'm... I didn't know. When I tried to remember, it was like my mind would fog over. I couldn't get close to it. It was like a mirage in the desert. I wonder how old I am. Nope. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you mean? Sarah's expression relaxed into a silly look. What? Don't scare me like that. ごめんごめん。あ、そうだ。切り倒してみたらわかるかもよ。少年が何歳なのか。Huh? <laughs> yeah, right. For some reason, my eyes strayed to the palms of my hands. In the darkness, only dimly, dimly illuminated by the emergency lights, my fingers appeared to glow slightly white. I still didn't know what had happened to my finger. Yubi. 
Wondering this, Sarah grabbed my finger. Hmm, this sounds like something from uh, Skyward Sword. It was so, so it was so sudden, it put me at a loss for words. In the darkness, Sarah whispered words as if confirming something as she gripped my thumb. Nagayumi, seoshi, tsuki no se, yume no naka yori, machi yori nu. Yeah, it, it does sound like something from the Legend Zelda Skyward Sword. What does that mean? Sarah just shook her head. There was no sign that she was going to answer me. She just murmured the words like a spell or a nursery rhyme as she held my thumb gently. A moon sprite. I wonder why Sarah had suddenly grabbed my thumb. Still, I didn't have any urge to pull it away from her. As I remained aware of my thumb, I searched for an answer from Sarah's slightly sweaty warm palm. With the two bags, Sarah finally released my thumb. In the darkness, I couldn't very well make out Sarah's expression. The area around Sarah's mouth pulled slightly down as if she were sad. Warmth lingered around my thumb. I don't know why, but I hesitated to wipe the warmth away and gently inserted my hand into my pocket, leaving my thumb extended. With this, we will be able to shut off the hot water flowing to the generator room. To guess you, you tackled the main work. There was hardly anything for Sarah and myself to do as we knew squad about machines. We functioned as assistants, shining flashlights, hangover tools, and loosening valves as instructed. After this and that, we succeeded in repairing the generator. It was just like Sarah had said. The cause of the blackout was the opening of the safety valve due to the drop in air pressure. When pressure from the steam becomes excessive, the valve, the valve automatically opens to release the gas and prevent damage. Normally, after release of surplus gas, the valve is designed to shut naturally, but we're only at one atmosphere. Because the safety valve never closed, the steam continued leaking. Anyway, that was the gist of the explanation. We left the generator room and went to the pipe room. Okay, we're gonna go with Sarah and Sora. Ara? Shonen san? Shonen mo kochi ni kita no? Yeah, but where do you plan to hide? Issho ni nigeru nara, kimi wo kangaete. Run with the two of them. So da, ii koto kangaete chatta. Seeing that Sarah stopped suddenly. What? What? Dou shita no desu ka? Kouyu toki ko sa ninpo de gozaru ya. Ninja skills. So that no, Takeshi Uji ga kitara RSD de mujin no tsuru o hyoji shite kudasare. Nazukete kagaku nippo o kakure mino. Ahaha. Eh? Demo sore wa. Isn't that against the rules? Katai koto iwanai no. Shunkan ido ya seitai hanno no kenshi wa kinshi ni shita kedo, demi jitai no shio wa kinshi sare te nai jan? And then he's gonna smash right into a wall. That's funny. That's sneaky. Urawasa te itte yo. No, I'm not having any of it. That's the same thing. Just then. Probably. We peered through the darkness in the direction of the sound. We might have the silhouette of a person. That bill can only be. Ah! No, it's Takeshi! Eh? Hurry, we gotta hide! We dashed down the corridor. Ah, The water tight door blocked our way forward. We're stuck! Ikidomari! There was no room nearby that we could escape into. 
we should have hidden in the room somewhere. I guess he was heading towards us for sure. And this way, we'll be caught for sure. Sarah was flustered, sort of a sign to fate. On the other hand, I... No, not yet! At this distance, I decided that it would be better to make a dash for the nearest room. Let's go, I think we'll make it! I dragged Sarah and Sora back to the corridor. We found the entrance and dove into a room. But... Whoa, what happened? I couldn't believe it, he cut us off! It's no good, go back! Just as we went back to the corridor... It was Takeshi. あ、見つかってしまいましたね。全く手こずらせやがって。もう少年が戻れなんて言うからだよ。But but didn't know what else to do. Can stomp. Not long after that, he found you as well. That ending. So yeah. Takeshi I'll come along, Takeshi. I'll come along and help with the repairs. Nakyo senpai wa dou suru no? Nah, forget Nakyo. Yu's tougher than the rest of us. She'll be fine. Besides, if something was wrong, she would use Leimei to contact us. Demo, sakki no yure de senpai no mi ni nani ka atta to shitara. Sore wa daijoubu desu. Gen jiten de wa, Lemiu no naibu ni chukseetsu teki na higai wa hasseh shitei nai mo you desu. Yeah, I know it's cheating that I'm using the flowchart, but I won't get the good ending. Tanaka-san's place is under the floor. I think the sensor will be fixed in a few days, so I'll be able to confirm it soon. And according to the flowchart, she's the character with the least options to get the least options. Period. Yes. You know, to get the good ending. Just wait until Yu's situation is resolved. Then I'll confirm the situation. Hmm. She's fine. I promise. Promise? How can I promise that? But somehow I was sure of it. Wakatta. With that one word, the tension seemed to leave Sarah. Nani yatte iru no? Oite iku wa yo. The next few guys do this. We were the only people left in the room. Sarah and I chased after everyone. We quickly climbed the stairs. We were told that it wasn't urgent, but we still couldn't afford to be careless. So give me quietly show. Quietly shouldered the heavy toolbox, climbing higher and higher. Sarah and I followed her while Takeshi and Sora lagged behind. Hey, Tsugumi! I called out Tsugumi up ahead. Nani? Tsugumi responded without looking back. There is something that, that's been bugging me. Dakara, nani? Why were you eating a hot dog? I still couldn't figure it out. Tsugumi's behavior was incom incomprehensible to me. Then I hit upon it. It was like she had been showing off. But what she said was. That's it? I don't think it's wrong, but... Sarah chimed in... Ugh, sorry. Sarah chimed in with a question of her own. I suppose you're right. We didn't know about them until right before, either. After that, we fell into a silence. It looked like Takeshi and Sora were having a low-key conversation behind us. But... Tsukumi started to speak suddenly. For a second, I didn't know what she was talking about. And I realized she meant the whole hot dog thing. Tsukumi gave a rare laugh. But it was the kind of laugh that would raise the hair on the back of your neck. <coughs> we finally arrived at Zwei's talk. Looking around the floor, everything seemed normal, but we could hear a hissing sound coming from somewhere. We walked towards the sound. それにしても、昨日は何ともなかったのにな。急に異常が起きるなんて、どうしてだと思う？そうですね。何もかも予想通りとはいかないものですが、みんなが飛び跳ねたからじゃないの？は？ほら、みんなで騒がしくしてたから
For a while, all we could do was stand around not knowing what to say. We had arrived in front of the room, making a strange noise. やっぱりこの音、倉庫の中から聞こえるな。ちょっと倉庫内の状態をスキャンしてきますね。Saying that sword disappeared. 開けたら蒸気が大爆発とかしないよな。Tsukumi fixed her eyes on the door. So, ne. Heki nan janai? Wakar no ka? Mosh ka shite. Tekito ni itte mita dake yo. Sora appeared in front of the door. Kakunin shimashita. Kiyat se jo, yudok gas no hasse nashi. Hitsunai kiyon, hitsudo wa, tomo ni wazuka tsutsu desu ga jousho chu. Pipe no ichibu ga hason shite, sko shi mizu ga mure teimasu. Suishin wa fukai tokoro de, jus senchi teado desu. Ha. そんなことだろうと思ったわはい何でもないわそれなら大したことないわねまあそうですね中に入ろう修理すれば問題なくなるんだろうはいお願いします We opened the door We looked toward the wall that was making the hissing sound There was a faint crack in the pressure regulating pipe and one that was dancing out of it in a fine mess お本当に大丈夫なの多分平気よこの程度ならすぐに直せるわどうすればいいパイプが少し歪んでしまっているわ金具を締め直すからパイプを持って支えてくれるあ,あ了解私は向こうのこのパイプがつながってるバルブがあるのわかるよいでござる And what about me? 指示するから私に必要な道具を渡してちょうだい。Got it. We started to work. We opened and closed a number of valves, connected and repaired pipes, and welded shut cracks. それにしても手慣れてるな。何が溶接だよ。どこかで覚えたのか知りたいのいや、それはお前。どうでもいいことを聞くのは悪い癖よね。<笑>こう言えば満足。はあなんだそりゃ分かったよもう聞かねえよ Every once in a while I felt that Tsukumi's words seem out of place I stole glances at Tsukumi's expression as I gave and took back tools Of course her face didn't really tell me anything Sora watched us from a while for a while from the side After a while an intercom in the corner of the room sounded あれなんだ呼び出しか田中さんからですどうやら警備室の方にいらっしゃるようです先輩無事だったんだ That's a relief. すいませんが皆さん田中さんが私を呼んでいます向こうに行かなくてはならないのですがああ行ってきてくれこっちはなんとかなりそうだはいではあとはお願いしますね Sora pushed in to come and disappeared as if it had sucked her in We knew she could travel instantly but was still an odd sight 少年こっちの方はもういいから、向こうのバルブの操作をお願い。What? Sure. No problem. I moved over to the area by the pipes that she indicated. まず、そこの青いバルブを。What? Oh, what was that? For a second, I saw something. そうしたら、次に赤いバルブをひねって。The intercom continued to ring, to continue to ring, and the hissing sound of the steam persisted. That feeling I just had. That was like before. I know, it was like when I was going to the conference room from the kiosk this morning. So, let's just wait a little bit there. Okay, I'm ready. 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 Inside my head went all white. Felt like my consciousness was whisked off somewhere else. W what was that? An image flashed at the back of my mind, and it felt that my brain was being hammered by light. It would stop and start, stop and start. Boxes falling and shattering to the floor. Massive amounts of water cascading down. And then. Oh. Yeah. He's, he's remembering something from. From Tsugumi's room. Wait, but he wasn't there at all. Was yeah, was he? I think so. No, I can't remember. 
I remember losing all power to Stan. They just complain right there on the spot. That was that was it can't Oi, be. Oi, what Oi. Are you crumpling on the spot? But didn't Takeshi do that? Takeshi took my shoulders, bringing me back from wherever I'd been. Takeshi? Oh, I'm okay. Takeshi, trouble. What? If we stay here, there's going to be trouble. We have to escape now. We cough the words out deliriously. Things are going to fall, and water will flood in, and some will get really hurt. Huh. Wonder how... Wonder... Hmm. Right now, we have to escape! I felt like I was filling up with fear and panic. My left cheek burned like it had been scalded. Pressing my hand on my hurting face, I stood up. The pounding of my heart finally gone under control. Saying that, Tsugumi pointed to a corner of the room. What? わからない作業の邪魔だって言ってるのなあ、それはちょっと言い過ぎだろ少年は疲れてるだけなんだよあなたは黙ってていいこういう時にこの子みたいなのがいると迷惑なのきっと今につまらないミスを犯すに決まっ
Kamanshiro. Oh, maybe he's remembering something about his past. It was the gruff voice of a man ringing out. I suspect that the girl had been hit. It sounded like she had fallen on the hard concrete and was crying even harder. I covered my ears with my hands and shook my head. Still, the girl's cries of pain didn't stop. As if trying to escape, I crawled across the floor to the opposite corner of the room and curled up. The moon's light was bright. I covered myself with a blanket as if to hide and close my eyes. The, girls just, the girl just cried and cried. Gong, 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 thud. I wonder what that sound could be. I didn't want to think about it anymore. Even if I closed my eyes, even if I plugged my ears, the image of the girl struggling on the floor jumped back in, onto my mind. The voice gradually got weaker and faded. Finally, it disappeared completely. In the silence, only a muffled sob echoed hollowly. The air in the room was so dank and stale that it felt heavy and strange on the skin. I heard a feeble voice. The sudden curses of the man drowned out the girl's voice. No, I didn't know. I didn't run away. Yeah? No, I... I promised. その約束は果たせなかった。というよりも最初から果たすつもりなんかなかったんだろ。No. <笑> No, 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 no. Oh, yeah, so I shouted and grabbed the chair lying on the floor with both hands. I took the chair as if to scare away a ghost and pounded it on the wall. Wildly, I put all my limb and strength into it, over and over. Wow. So I'm guessing it's the same room that he was remembering? Huh. But he saw the moon. Huh. The chair bent awkwardly and scraped against the dented wall. Outside the window, the moonlight shined far away. Damn you! I took the chair and with all my strength threw it at the moon. Crash. The moon scattered like fireworks, shattering its pieces. I'll kill you. Saying this, I threw my body into the steel door. The door wouldn't budge, but I didn't give up. If I had to pulverize my body, I was still going to open that door. You know, I just don't get where is he, where he is. I hurled myself against the door again and again. The rage I felt made my blood boil and my body shake with fury. Something hot and sticky flowed from near my temple. Every time I crashed into the door, a shock of pain ran through my body. I thought my shoulder might already be broken. A dull sound echoed in the darkness endlessly. <laughs> Suddenly the door opened. White light poured into my eyes. Ah, ah. Tears swelled my eyes overflowing. Through my blurred vision, I could make out Sarah. Sarah stood surrounded by the bright light, her hands outstretched to me. 
Finally, my consciousness was sucked into the light. Powerless, I slumped to the floor, lying there. My body felt heavy like lead and like it would sink into the floor. Next thing I knew, I was on the bed. The ceiling was so white it was slightly blinding. It smelled of disinfectant. Was this the infirmary? Shadow passed above me on the head. Bed. It was you. Deja vu. No, oh, this was something I had actually experienced before. Two days before on the first day, then I woke up, you was at my side then. Where is Sarah? So, I see. I took both hands from the blanket and stared dreamily at my palms. The countless wrinkles etched there, intertwining, reaching out like branches of a tree in complicated patterns. The pinkish skin, and buried deeper the slightly blue veins, and five fingers. Five on the left, five on the right, and ten in total. The same as always. My lost finger still hadn't come back to me yet. There was still the deep scar on my left thumb. Like always, I ran my pinky over the scar gently. Like always. I see. Maybe this is a habit of mine. Strangely, that fact had penetrated naturally into my mind. But I wondered when, where, and how I had injured my thumb. Just maybe the scar held some kind of clue to help me remember my past. As I traced the wound with my pinky, it caused a slight stinging pain that tickled a little bit. I was finally feeling complete. I was finally feeling completely calmed down. You poured me a cup of freshly brewed coffee. Coffee, handed it to me, and sat down next to my bed. I took the coffee. After a sip, I started to explain. なんらかの共通点があるってことね。プロブリ。話を聞いた限りではそれってどこかの病室みたいだよね。セクルム。君昔入院したことがあるんじゃないの？こんなことを言ったら失礼かもしれないけど、少年は前にも今と同じようなこと
I didn't think that even if you compressed all of the world's poltergeists into this itty bitty space, they could have done much more. All I could do was stand there with my jaw on the floor, as you said. She was saying this as if to make sure. Huh? Yeah. About here, I think. According to the area around Yu's feet. Door? The door? Uh, I shut it, I think. After the door shut, I wanted to escape and started throwing myself against the door. I closed the door as I answered. Just like before, the room was thrown into a darkness. The only source of light was the moonlight pouring through the little window. What? Moonlight? You grasped around in the dark with her hands. I could see everything perfectly. You walked around. You walked along the wall looking for the switch, sometimes tripping on plastic boxes scattered on the floor. Each body gave off a faint light. Every time she took a step, a faint streak like image followed her. It was like the flame of a candle flickering in a thick mist. That is really odd. You see that thing in the back there? It turns into a little window when the lights are off. Yeah, when the lights are on, it's like a control panel of sorts. He marked this as she started at, stare, stared at the light switch. こういうお客様に見えないところにこそお金って使うべきなんじゃないの？こんなところで手を抜いてるからきっと事故だって。まあそんなことはどうでもいいや。You whipped around and scouring the room, she said. ところで窓はどこ？ There wasn't a single window in the whole room. Thinking about it, it made sense. Nobody would fork over the cash for a little window with special pressure-resistant glass in the little storage room stuck on the side of the warehouse. I looked around for moonlight that had been there until a second ago. There was no moon. I wonder if it was because I had shattered it. But that wasn't it. What I, what I have mistaken for a window was just a little square hole. You followed my eyes and went and stood in front of the square hole. I went over beside her and looked up at the hole. The hole was bordered by a steel frame. It was about the same size as a coin locker. It was about 20 inches on each side. There was a door in the hole. I might have broken it, but the door was bent completely and hung loose at a hinge on the side of the hole. The hole was more than an empty space. A bunch of colored wirings, wiring, something like an integrated circuit board, some kind of plug and something like a small lever were all packed into the hole. What is this? I had no idea what it was. Inverter unit? I see. Everything was she was saying was like gibberish to me, but I nodded. You said straight faced it without look Ooh, looking at me. I reached out to touch the inverter unit thing. It was a little bit warm. Or maybe I had it backwards. Maybe I knew that it was warm before I touched it. So I had to want to make sure by touching it. In the end we really didn't we really didn't learn anything. No, but but it did seem like something we something was trying to move, at least to me. It felt like it felt like someone inside me was tossing and turning in his sleep. I finally gathered again in the conference room. Even though I just embarrassed myself in front of everyone, they all acted as if nothing happened. We were killing time. We still couldn't think of any way to escape. Still, we didn't want to feel like we were completely wasting our time. So we all decided to wander around Lemu one more time. As we made the rounds, the Geshi said, What do you think the record is for running from one end of Lemu to the other? 
think we should try to give the chicken sandwiches a completely new flavor somehow. He made a number of stupid comments. We all, with the exception of Tsugumi of course, listened half exasperated and half interested. Of course, it was the kind of indirect thank you for her looking after me twice and worrying about my lost memory. Oh, he's talking about you. You, you, a hot surge of hate raced through me. Who the hell do you think you are? You good for nothing! I scream and grab Tsugumi by the collar. You grab me from behind and pull me away from Tsugumi. Let go, let go, I said, let go of me! I continued to struggle violently. It was like a desperate beast, devoid of all reason. With my fangs bared and thirst for blood. What was left of my mind had ceased to be me. I walked around Lemu. After what happened, I didn't want to be around you or Takeshi. I was too worked up just to stick around in one place. I thought I would pick the place they were least likely to come and wander around it. I wondered what that fit of rage had been about. Why, why had I gone so mad? Why? Tsukumi had stared coldly down at Sarah. And Sarah had desperately battled to stand her ground. What were the emotions that had welled up within me in that instant? I felt like I was on the verge of figuring it out. Like... Like when Lost Memory had been concealed by a thick fog. But now it was only an inch away, right there, covered by a thin sheet. But no matter how thin it was, I still couldn't remove it. The more I thought about it, the further away into the fog my memory seemed to recede. I wondered what I could have had in my past. Continued to wander Lemu without understanding anything. Suddenly, I felt like I heard someone's voice in the room, so I entered it. In the sprawling night sky were a number of orb shaped planets, and in between the planets there was a huge, soft looking whale floating. This was the Cosmic Whale Room. Of course, the whale and the starry sky were all merry theme merrily theme park attractions. I thought that wide open space and the attractions would help me to ease my ragged nerves. Even though it was fake, the expansive space eased my tense mind, and nerves frazzled from being cooped up for so long. But I still had no memory. I realized again just how stressed this situation had made me without even noticing. For a while, I just relaxed, looking at the scenery. What? Something moved slightly on top of the whale. I squinted, peering at it. Sarah? I glanced quickly at the planet next to the whale and headed for the stairs leading to it. I walked to the edge of the whale's nose and sat down next to Sarah. I thought that normally whales and dolphins had have their blowholes and nostrils near the middle of their heads, so it wasn't probably accurate to say its nose. We looked at the countless stars sparkling overhead. It seemed as if we could reach the stars in the sky. If I had stood up, I could have probably actually touched the star. Because it was all of facade of fake stars projecting onto the ceiling. I think it's pronounced facade or something. It doesn't have that accent, so I think it's facade. Speaking of fake, the whale was too. I don't know what kind of cutting edge technology they use, but the skin on the whale felt like it could have been real. Then again, I didn't suppose I had ever actually touched a real whale. Maybe it was just working from some image I had of what whale skin would feel like. Not having a memory was mysterious in a way. Normal and abnormal, common sense and nonsense were all dictated by memory. For example, if a sea owner suddenly appeared right in front of me, and he said, I'm your father, then well, I probably wouldn't believe him. Because in this life, I'd never met a cross between a sea owner and a person. But with no memory, there was no way for me to know for sure if I ever met a sea owner person. Think of it that way. It was amazing to me that I could be so logical. I imagined that my memories were stored away in a jar in my brain somewhere, and I was adding to the jars even now. Only the number of jars that I could open was limited. I had no idea where the jars from before May 1st were packed away. Still, there was some, someone opening my jars, and he or she was judging whether what was happening, what was normal or abnormal, common sense or nonsense. Rather, that intensity was telling me I was a safe without a key. The treasure in the safe didn't belong, belong to me. Incidentally, it was just the texture of the whale skin that made it seem so lifelike. 
The whale was alive. At least it seemed that way to me. A whale swimming in the starry sky. The repetitive wave-like motion of its back as it swam through the sky. His soft mouth opened and closed and even puffed from time to time. About every three minutes, he blew out a warm breath through his blowhole. The seawater mist of spray would scatter around the area. Sitting at the tip of his nose, Sarah Knight bobbed up and down in time with its movements. Still, the whale undulated so slowly that we could let go with our hands and still feel safe. It was like a cradle rocking back and forth. On the back of the whale, we sailed through the cosmos. We were on our way to planet Koo Kui Kui. Sarah slowly took something out of her pocket and showed it to me. It was an old style oil lighter. She lit it. The flickering flame made Sarah's face look red. I wondered why she was carrying around a lighter. I couldn't picture her as the type that would smoke. I thought I might ask her, but as I did, saw her open her other hand. In it was the pendant from before. A thin chain was wrapped around her index finger. The pendant swayed in her hand. Sarah brought the flame closer to the pendant and started at and stared at it and started at it dreamily. Her expression relaxed. It was as if Sarah was mem mesmerized by something. My mirror, my mirror was embedded in the pendant. The flame of the lighter reflected brightly in the mirror. I wondered if Sarah might be staring at her reflection and admiring herself. My idea made me laugh without thinking. Huh? What's wrong? I mean, it looks like you're sitting there grinning at yourself. I guess you got a bit of narcissistic side. A bit of a narcissistic side, huh? But that Sarah snapped the lighter shut. That moment I noticed something odd. Yeah, it looked like the flame of the lighter in the mirror had split into two images. I thought that maybe there was a crack in the mirror. Hey, can I see that pendant for a second? The whale's body continued to move up and down. I figured that was what Sarah meant. I won't. Saying that, I took the pendant from Sarah. Oh, it has a tiny crack. I wrapped the chain around my finger and brought it close to my face, as I suspected the mirror was cracked. It wasn't just broken, a piece of it was missing. I touched the area that was missing. I thought it had been broken from the shock of Tsugumi dropping it. The missing fragment might still be lying about in that room. Feeling the sharp contours of where the missing piece belonged to me, belong made me sad. I took my fingers from the mirror and held my palm out towards Sarah. Without saying anything, Sarah plunked the lighter down in the palm of my hand. Fits. It sparkled and lit. Oh. I had spoken without thinking. The flame appeared in the mirror, dimly but in three dimensions. So this is a hologram pendant? That's so freaking cool. Eh? So... The mirror showed a person. It was basically a headshot. From the shoulders on and up, the head and facial expressions were extremely clear. I imagine it was made using a holo, holo machine. Holo machines were machines that would burn a hologram into pendants or keychains or any other object that a person wanted. On Lemu, there were even a number of these machines. I remembered that much. It was the same as before. If there were something to trigger my memory, I could recall some things. I thought that if I could remember these kind of things, why not? But I shoved that thought aside and focused again on the image in the pendant. Since it was a hologram, it also had depth. Changing the angle of the mirror changed the angle of his, of his face. His it was an image of a man. A man I didn't know. I suspected it was an image that was closed away in one of those inex inac inaccessible drawers of my memory. I had no memory of the face. Who is this? Huh? Is it your boyfriend? Sarah remained quiet. Her expression was frozen solid. It's your boyfriend, isn't it? I asked her again, but there was not even a glimmer of hidden romance on her face. Any girl looking at her boyfriend's picture would probably show a smile, especially stuck in the middle of the ocean. Hey, he looks pretty cool. I said in a teasing way. Actually, he was so good looking it was enough to make you sick. <laughs> he sort of looks like Takeshi. Sort of. I thought she might chirp out, Oh honey, I hope you're well, I miss you. But there was one thing that bothered me. His image was all, all in one color. But there was kind of a retro trend going on, and some people did go for the sepia or monochrome in holograms. So it didn't really seem all that outlandish. So, how long have you been dating? He put out the lighter set on the pendant and held it out to Sora, Sarah. She didn't take them. 
She was still frozen stiff. It looked like she was forgetting to breathe. Hey, Sarah. Sarah? Hello? Sarah! I grasped the pendant that she hadn't taken and shook Sarah's shoulders. Sarah didn't even blink. And then... Foosh. The whale exhaled. <laughs> Sarah leaped up and smashed into me, levering me with a powerful tackle. Who knows, it might have been that she was so surprised she just wanted something to grab onto. Still, her full weight came barreling into me. With that, I went down and she crumpled with me. We slid down and off the whale's smooth skin. The stars appeared to gain, appeared to gain distance. What they say about space being weightless, well, that seemed, uh, that seemed like a lie. Before I had time to think of anything else, my body made contact with the hard floor. A fine mist descended down to my skyward face. Sarah was on top of me, unmoving. I could I could hear her breathing near my ear. Sarah continued talking as she lifted up her face and peered into my face. <laughs> May 4th. I'm gonna save this for next episode. Yeah. For me, it's been 1 hour and 12 minutes. But for you, it's like, I don't know, 40, maybe 50 minutes. I have to cut out like 20 minutes out, because it was just me skipping. So yeah. Anyway guys, see you next episode.